The key principle, keep it simple, is often forgotten by data science people. For example, you should always start with a random model when tackling a new AI initiative. And in this video, I will show you why. Hi there, I'm Kevin Fernandez, your AI advisor, and welcome to another AI shot. In this one, I will discuss this common trend of data scientists to overcomplexify things. Okay, I have done this myself multiple times and over the last 10 years of working on AI models, I have been learning this um, pattern or to avoid this practice and in the difficult way, which is failing on, on some projects. And I will share this, this pattern with, with you, which is we like to make things more complex than they should. And we like to start by the complex way of doing things. But in general, when working on any AI in any new AI project, you should always work with a baseline, with a random model, with a very dummy model, and work on the entire pipeline from end to end, from data acquisition to deployment and making the actual final decision. Let me give you three, three examples of real life projects where we face this problem. The first one was like a campaign recommendation system for final customers. Uh, so for, for recommending certain products to the final customers, and we work on the entire model. Okay, the model was actually giving very good results. Um, and then in the end, we realized uh, together with the client that the infrastructure he was using didn't support sending personalized recommendations. Okay, they were just allowing to segment the customer base in small batches, in small buckets, and that, that was it. So we weren't able to actually execute the model with the final predictions at first, and we had to, you know, invest additional resources on um, you know modifying the infrastructure of the client to allow this possibility of sending individual recommendations to each one of the users. So in this case, the model was good, but maybe if we started with a very simple model, we put the model in production end to end, even if it was a very dumb model, and um, we will have realized this error way sooner than we did. Okay, the second um, the second example uh, what is, it was also another recommended system. Um, in this case, uh, the problem was not with the deployment, the deployment was possible, but we were looking at the wrong metrics, okay? So we were looking at some technical metrics, it was not accuracy, but let's say it was accuracy, and they look good, but in the end, business-wise, the model was almost random, okay? Not exactly random, a bit better than random, but it was almost random and we kind of thought we were way beyond our our situation because we were tracking only technical metrics. In case we, we will have, you know, closed the loop sooner, bef even before building uh, the, the AI model with a simple, you know, dummy, stupid prediction, then we will have identified what is the baseline, the benchmark we, we had to bid in terms of business value and then build upon this metric. I have another video of stop measuring in accuracy, start using dollars, US dollars, and this is the kind of things um, I'm discussing here. Okay, in this in this second example, and the third uh, case uh, was a project, a computer vision project, where we were having some uh, low with la high losses, so um, some difficulty to make the loss uh, converge, and um, we didn't even identify that the loss was too high because we didn't have any intuition, any sense of you know what was a good loss level for this project and it was taking a lot of time to to converge okay and the issue is that we didn't identify the loss was just too high because we didn't train a random model to understand what was the loss of a random model okay of, of a dummy model okay or what was the performance level of a dummy model in the end uh, the issue here was a missing data outlier uh, issue that was making the model training more stable but we took, it took us a lot of time to identify this issue just because we didn't decide, we didn't choose to start with a dummy model, with a simple model on sounding and getting some intuition on what was the level of performance or the loss functions for this kind of dummy model before onboarding into building these, these complex models. By the way, if you are embracing any new AI project and want to understand how to ideate and discover AI use cases, you have a bonus content a link to, our, to the free preview of our daily nice course in the description, okay? So remember to subscribe, the free preview is, is free, of course. And so let me show you our approach when we are tackling a new AI project that will prevent you from making these very same mistakes we did in the past. 
The first one is start, step one is start with a random model, okay? And by random model, I actually mean a random model, okay? Why? This will give you a good sense on the expected, on the expected metrics. And by expected metrics, I don't mean necessarily technical metrics like accuracy, rock, you see. Again, I don't re remember our video, stop measuring accuracy, start me measuring US dollars. You also have to think about the business value, okay? the business value you are generating from end to end, okay? So this will give you a good intuition of the opportunity, of where you are as now, etc. And this will be the initial benchmark you will have to beat with your model, okay? This random model that predicts a random uh, decision at every time, okay? You gain some intuition, you validate, you close the loop from end to end, from data acquisition up to the decision making or the deployment of the model, just to make sure your infrastructure is compatible with what you are trying to build. Then, the uh, second step, you build a dummy model or you replicate the current process, okay? And this dummy model can be, you know, sending the most common recommendation or the most common product or answering always the most common decision, okay? The most common prediction. You measure again the, um, the performance with this dummy model or with the re we, after replicating the current approach by humans and you measure again and you uh, you gain some additional um, understanding uh, an additional sense of you know where you are business wise and this will become your new benchmark it's not a random model it's the new benchmark that you have you go full cycle from getting the data up to generating the predictions and putting the predictions in production of course be careful you don't touch actually your customer base but you do this on using some dry runs or some, some internal pilots pilots and then you go for the step three okay which is you actually work your you actually develop your your ai model okay and still even when you are training an ai model do not go all in into your ai model prioritize the data sources that you have available and that have a higher expected impact so you actually focus on um, building in an iterative fashion the best model you can on short loops okay so do not invest a lot of effort on putting this model on a, a massive model in production go data source by data source feature by feature always closing the loop how can i ingest the data what is the model performance the technical model performance putting it in production or simulating the business value is creating always comparing with the baseline with the dummy model with the previous model that you already built but do this incrementally, okay? Then uh, you should ask, you know, why should I follow this approach? This seems like a lot of extra work. If I know I will be doing the AI model in the end, so why should I start with these uh, random dummy models? Basically because it will give you a lot of business understanding. You will understand way better where is your business nowadays. You will get a, a better sense of how is your data. You will have a feasibility assessment of your model, of your project, not just a feasibility assessment of the technical component of it internally in terms of data, but also of the business capability to adapt to this model. So going step by step, data ingestion, putting the model in production, uh, making decisions based on the business, delivering these decisions to the final stakeholders and then receiving them and using them under daily practice, you will shorten this loop and you will find bottlenecks and constraints early on in the process instead of three, four months after working on an AI model, on an AI model and realizing that you couldn't get the data in production in real life or realizing that maybe you weren't able to choose between five or six actions because some of them were limited on the interface, they were limited on the infrastructure and the final stakeholder can only choose between one or two, okay? So those are the kind of things you will discover way earlier in the process and that will save you a lot of headaches uh, in your development. And the third advantage of following this approach is that by working on close iterations where you are closing this loop with a random atomy model, you are already unlocking the process for, for other teams that need to do an independent work from your predictions. For example, IT operations, etc. they need to take your predictions and putting them, you know, in the current pipeline, in the current activities, etc. So if you just work on a dummy endpoint that generate random predictions, they will already have some starting point to move forward with their side of the project, okay? So you will gain business understanding, you will understand, you will have a feasibility assessment of all the stages of the, of the project, 
and you will give some work to the rest of the of the company to, to the other teams involved in the company so you stop being a blocker in in this process okay i hope you like this video remember to like and subscribe see you soon bye bye